All right. Well, welcome everyone to our virtual photographers roundtable right here at the Rochester Art Center via the world of Zoom. My name is Amy Gerritsen, and I'm the Education and Community Outreach Coordinator right here at the Rochester Art Center in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, we have several guests today from all over the country, and I'm so delighted that although we couldn't be together physically in person, that technology allows us to be together tonight on Zoom. So we have um, five fabulous photographers joining us via Zoom from all across the country. Um, those photographers are Trevor Beatty, Liam James, Daniel Little, Eric Magnuson, and Ben Segrin. All five have worked with um, Ethan Munt, who performs as Utica Queen to um, contribute editorial fashion photos to this beautiful exhibition of um, his garments that we have here at the Rochester Arts Center. Uh, very quickly, I just wanna read a few quotes from each photographer. Um, Trevor Beatty, your first up. Trevor says, uh, my favorite style of photo work rides the line between fantasy and fashion. Drag also often rides the line in that fascinating way. Once I discovered drag as a photo subject, I haven't looked back. It allows me to push concepts much further than I normally would and work with other creative minds. Um, you can find Trevor at Trevor Beatty Editorial via Instagram. So welcome, Trevor. Next, we have Liam James. Liam says, our goal when you see our photos is that you see a story that instantly makes sense. That's part of the magic of drag. It's an art form that conveys the story of queer experience. You can follow Liam at Liam James Photo. We also welcome today Daniel Little. Dan says, Ethan was such a pleasure to work with during the whole process. The energy he brought was second to none, which helps make any photo shoot a fun experience. This project was a joy to work on. It's a joy to have you with us, Dan. You can follow Dan at the Dan Little. Daniel Little. Dan at the Daniel Little. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Um, we also have with us Eric Magnuson. Eric says, I hope that I've done the garments proud and given them immortal life in my work. Partnering with Ethan is such an amazing privilege. And I hope to continue that we continue to outdo ourselves with each future shoot. So welcome, Eric. You can follow Eric at Eric Richard Magnuson, two S's. Uh, and last but not least, we're, we're so pleased to welcome um, Ben Segrin. Uh, ben says of Utica Queen, she trusts me to meet the moment and showcase her creations in their best light, quite literally. I hope that these images convey that we will all have the ability to be whoever we want to be and anything is possible with a little lipstick and a whole lot of heart. You can follow Ben Segrin at is that Jupiter on Instagram. So all of these fantastic photographers have Instagram accounts. Please go follow them. Please take a look at their work, support their work. Um, and speaking of someone who is so supportive, maybe with a little bit of lipstick and a whole lot of heart, um, I'm proud to introduce co-curator of the exhibition, Mr. Brian Dukershein. Uh, Brian serves on our board of directors right here at the Rochester Arts Center. And um, He'll be making a few comments and diving into questions for our panelists today. So I know that was a um, pretty lengthy introduction, but thank you so much for listening. And thank you to all the photographers for being here tonight. All right, cool. Thank you, Amy. Um, so again, just want to echo the thanks to all the photographers um, who are giving their time with us tonight. Um, very early on in the process of planning this exhibition, I knew how important including the photography of Utica would be. Yes, I, you know, I was sort of envision this exhibition being about her garments and giving audience members a chance to get, you know, very up close and immerse themselves in the wonderful world that, you know, Ethan creates. But as wonderful as the garments are, they're not as absolutely incredible as they can be when Ethan is in them. 
And although, unfortunately, we couldn't have him on retainer for four months to just walk around the gallery in his dresses all day, um, the next best, best thing to that would be including the incredible photos that are part of this exhibition. Um, yes, you know, visitors can see the dress and marvel at, you know, the beauty and the craftsmanship and the inspiration behind it. But including the photos gives the audience a chance to see the true embodiment of these characters and the fantasy that, that Ethan creates and makes it possible for all of us to enjoy. And so that was a very, very important part of this exhibition from the beginning was, you know, yes, we're going to have the garments, but we also need to show the photography. Um, so very, very pleased to have this opportunity to dive in and, and talk about this. So, um, so I guess first off, um, if we could just go around the room and uh, each of you, if you could just tell us a little bit about where you're from, your background, um, your, you know, career in photography up until now. Um, and then also how you got connected with, um, with Ethan. Let's see, I'm looking, uh, Trevor. I knew it. Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Trevor Beatty. Um, my background in photography started when I was 15. It was kind of random, actually. I stumbled across this website that was doing weekly photo challenges. And I thought one of the challenges looked fun. I um, stole my sister's point and shoot and took a horrible picture, did not do well in the challenge, but I had so much fun that I just, I kept doing it week after week, these weekly challenges and eventually started improving and started doing work for other people. And it just kind of built from there. Over time, I developed my own style and kind of figured out what parts of photography um, I really connected with, really enjoyed. And so I've kind of grown into this kind of whimsical fashion space that um, I, I really like doing and kind of mixing um, Photoshop with photography. And yeah, it's, it's been really fun figuring out my little niche in this in this mad mad giant world of photography. Um, I'm from originally from Wisconsin. I met Utica in Minneapolis. She was a local drag queen there. I was not super familiar with drag at the time, but I'd seen her a couple times. Loved her style, and reached out on Instagram. And then um, we did our first shoot shortly shortly after. She was super excited to work together and. That was, I think, like four, th maybe three or four years ago. And we've been working together on and off ever since. Yeah. And uh, fun fact, Ben is the, or, sorry, Trevor is the one who, when this whole idea for this exhibition came to me, um, and I went to Pam and was like, how does this sound? Is this something you'd be open to trying? And Pam's like, sure. Um, uh, this was, you know, midway through the airing of season 13 of Drag Race. And I'm like, okay, well, I've never met Ethan. I have no idea how to get a hold of him. And it was, so it was through Trevor, me finding Trevor on LinkedIn, <laughs> <laughs> messaging him and being like, hi, you don't know me, um, <laughs> but I'm from this art museum and I would really like to do an exhibition on Ethan. If you could uh, please put me in touch and, um, so in, in no small part, we also have Trevor to thank for making this happen. Uh, let's see, uh, Ben, do you wanna go next? I'd be happy to. Um, hi everybody, it's nice to see you all in um, two dimensions. You're looking beautiful tonight. Um, uh, my name is Ben Stegren. I am a photographer and a drag performer in New York City. And um, let's see, background. Uh, I started photography way back when um, I did makeup on myself and friends and decided to turn that into photos, which um, I started doing through music school. And then I went to school for opera and decided that wasn't the jam, went to school for photography. Um, and my first drag show I went to, I had been doing makeup in my bathroom 
got caught by my parents and it was a, a conversation um because I was like blue and covered in eyeshadow uh, but I I went to my very first drag show and I was like holy crap there are people that are doing what I like to do and there there's a community around this like this is so wild and so that's how I got into drag and photography and drag kind of like smushed into one beautiful um chaotic creation that it is now um and let's see now i yeah photograph fashion and makeup and beauty and drag and um, couldn't be happier about it and utica and i met at DragCon in new york city um we had been we had known of each other on the internet and i see this like beautiful creation this beautiful woman um with this giant red hair i will never forget and i was blue like i was all blue <laughs> and i came up and i was like you look good what what's going on what who are you um we had a, a fast friendship after that so very thankful to have utica in my world and to have her trust me with these photos so happy to be here nice to meet you all <laughs> uh dan hey guys how's it going um i'm daniel i'm up a, i'm a graphic designer up here in the twin cities uh big photoshop guy um went to school actually college for 3d animation uh wanted to stay up in minnesota instead of going to the coast and been graphic designer ever since so um, I do a lot of conceptual photography uh, based on that Photoshop. Um, I got into photography a couple years ago. My daughter was a senior and I was frugal, uh, so I wanted to save a little money. Um, I knew Photoshop, so I figured if I got the camera thing down, I'd be good. Um, so I went and rented a camera for 180 bucks and me and Mackenzie went out and we shot for the weekend and started editing photos. And so that's kind of how I got into like, like this professional photography thing. I had done a little bit before then, but not much. So um, watched little YouTube videos on some cameras and, and called it good. Um, I got connected with Utica by my good buddy, Trevor, who's on this call. Um, and uh, I went and helped out Trevor. By say, when I say I helped out Trevor on, on lighting, it just means I'm holding the pole with the, with the off-camera flash on the end. Trevor's kind of my lighting guy. So I didn't know a whole lot, uh, went and helped Trevor hold his uh, flash uh, on a shoot with Utica and um, Utica thought I'd be good for the, the, the beast set. I'd already done some Disney sets, uh, one being Belle. And so we set up a time and Trevor came and uh, helped me out with, with off camera flash on the beast set. And so the rest is history. Cool. Uh, Liam. Hello. Um. My name is Liam. Um, I'm born, raised, everything in Minnesota, um, living in the Twin Cities currently. Um, my background in photography, I kind of feel like I've always, cameras have always kind of been around me. My dad is, I grew up, like my dad is a, a freelance like video editor. So we kind of just had like computers, video cameras, point and shoots were like accessible to me. So I felt like I always felt like predisposed in that way. And I was definitely like um, the photo kid in my class, like in high school. I, I and like was kind of in that world, but it didn't really all connect or fall into place for me until college. I went to um, the University of Minnesota here in Minneapolis to study journalism. And so my background and where I'm coming at this, uh, the world of Utica through photography is a little different because things kind of fell into place for me with photography when I discovered uh, photojournalism and uh, like documentary photography and like working in newsrooms, like just that, um, I always had that creative side to me and creative impulses, but it wasn't really till that was married with storytelling did photography like really click for me and in, in a way that I was like oh I like I can I can do this and I'm really good at this as well um so that's kind of my world um and I met Utica um like early early 2017 in the winter when I was a senior 
in college um, and she was a senior at college at different colleges. And I was a little baby photojournalist and she was a little baby local drag queen. Like, and uh, it was it was still, she was doing like the, um, the weekly amateur competition at Lush um, here in Northeast Minneapolis. And I had a mutual friend I was in a photojournalism class and I was just looking for like a story subject and I was not even like, my drag knowledge was minimal at the time. I was not even really a, a fan of drag at the time, which is crazy to think of now because it's like everything I love in this earth. And a, a mutual friend connected us and we, um, she, she let me tag along with her for a couple of weeks for this like documentary student photo project. And we kind of have had a friendship since. Awesome. And last, but certainly not least, Mr. Magnuson. Hello, how's it going? Um, my name is Eric Magnuson. Um, I'm from Boston, Mass. Um, I have been doing photo professionally for about eight years maybe. Um, I started messing around with it in high school. Um, we took like, I took like a digital art class, you know, with those like crappy little point and shoots. Um, and at the time I was mostly studying uh, like drawing and painting, but I felt like, you know, I wanted to do a little bit of everything. Um, so I was like, how can I do as much as possible? Um, and I ended up going to Mass College of Art um, and studied industrial design. Um, I was very hesitant about going to an art school because I was like, you know, I'm paying a lot of money for this. I want to learn something new. Um, and I actually did one semester of photography there before I was like, it, it's very expensive, um, you know, when you're doing film and all that stuff. So I did one semester before I was like, I think I can figure it out on my own. Um, and then I didn't really follow up with it for a few years. I kind of just did it for fun here and there. Um, and then when I graduated, I had started working in a local bar around here um, and I photographed a couple of the drag queens there and I was like, this is the coolest thing. Um, <laughs> I was very interested in fashion photography and the problem with that when you're just getting started is, you know, you need to know stylists and you need to know makeup artists and you need to know all these people and drag queens are all of that in one. Um, so it was just a lot of fun. And, you know, I never had to tell anyone how to pose because they immediately know exactly what they're doing. Um, and then it wasn't until probably like three, four years ago where I really was like, I'm, I'm gonna do this full time. Um, I work as a product photographer and uh, do all of my side work on the side on weekends. Um, and I actually met Utica uh, through Instagram. Um, I like to photograph the drag race girls when I can. And when her season came out, I was kind of looking at the at the cast and was like, oh, she's very interesting and very like out of the blue. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, drag race is like, you hear about these people for so long and blah, blah, blah. And she was just this really interesting person hiding in Minnesota. So <laughs> I reached out and we set up a shoot. She came all the way to Boston, which was really, really excellent. Um, and we've been doing stuff ever since. Awesome. All right. Um, maybe going in the same order, because um, the next one is also something where I would absolutely love some, some input from each of you. Um, how would you describe your own personal style of photography in, you know, two to four words? And can you tell us how that style um, translated to or impacted um, the photos you took of, of Utica? Okay, uh, I touched on this briefly earlier, but I definitely tend to skew towards a more like whimsical uh, vibe with my work and really the world I like to play in. And I think that's actually a lot of the reason why I clicked with what Utica was doing and um, wanted to work with her is because she also operates in that like element of whimsy and humor and just like a little bit of surrealism. So I would say, yeah, like editorial, surrealism, um, whimsical, kind of in that realm. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. 
I think I was next. Is that correct? It's fine. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Okay. If I'm cutting someone off, I apologize. <laughs> um, I would say my my work, I tried to make it colorful, which is ironic because my favorite shoot Utica and I ever did was black and white. Um, but I would say colorful. I would say uh, dramatic, maybe fantastical. I always like to to bend uh, reality, maybe more than more than uh, normal. So yeah, those would be the words I would use for mine. And I always love a, a colored light, a fog machine, and <laughs> usually bending someone in half to make a really beautiful photo that might not be comfortable in the moment, but <laughs> it'll look good on the camera. Yeah. I think I was next. Um... I would say conceptual, a little bit like Trevor, whimsical. Uh, and so I think that's where um, Ethan's style and mine kind of met with, um, because Utica is obviously very whimsical in her outfits and, and her, her posing. Uh, I found that out. That was just awesome. Um, and so I had done a bell set with a model up here in Minnesota. And so I brought some of those vibes over to Ethan's, but kind of made Ethan's a little bit unique from that bell set. We used a lot of like um, candles in the in the Photoshop. I had this prop of um, the Beauty and the Beast candle. And so I used a lot of that and enhanced the lighting, painted a lot of light in. I've been doing a lot of digital art the last few years. So I used a lot of that in Ethan's set. Um, and I think it came out uh, just like we communicated with. So it was, it was kind of cool to work on a Disney set with Ethan. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, like describing my style, I kind of touched on this in my like description of my background, but my style is like definitely more like based in like storytelling, like in a literal way, like very like documentary photography in this world of like photojournalism that I'm coming from. Um, so I think like, but even in my more creative work, I think storytelling is really at the heart of what I'm trying to do in my photo work. And um, I think I view my photos and my style as like very like intentional as well. And just in general, like, I guess like queer is how I would describe my style. Like, and also just the direction I'm trying to continue on and just um, like queer as in like queer as in queer and queer as in like str the strange queerness things. I'm like, I'm interested in things that are like maybe a little strange and um, not necessarily like beautiful. Um, and I don't know, like working with uh, Utica and stepping into these um, more like fashiony beauty photo shoots was definitely like stepping outside stepping out of the box for me and it was um it really like for me it's like all the skills were there but I was um I had to apply them in a new way and I um just grew so much in working with Utica on the photos we've made thus far and yeah that's me um, I would say my photo style, I aim to do kind of uh, editorial and kind of high fashion. Um, I've always been drawn to that. And I think that, you know, drag has that little extra oomph that kind of makes it a little bit more, a little different while still being like something you could see in a magazine. Um, yeah, I think we have definitely kind of challenged each other in terms of what I, when I first started versus when like we are, where we are now in terms of our style of photos. Um, I think we've almost like, you know, kind of meshed in terms of like what we, we know what uh, the other person is looking for um, in our style. And that's been really exciting. Um, I definitely feel like mine is ever changing. Um, I really love to treat my lights as if they're spotlights and stage lights, just kind of add that drama, um, that feeling of you're seeing a drag queen uh, on a stage. And that's just what I think drag has always been to me too. So, yeah. Cool. All right, well, 
of course, like I wrote all these questions and I see now we're already like technically at the halfway point <laughs> of it, half an hour. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit and, and get to some good stuff here. Um, so I'd love to uh, pull up um, a photo from each of you that is in the exhibition and have you sort of walk us through, um, you know, sort of the story behind the shoot, what went into it, um, you know, the, the techniques, the equipment involved, um, you know, what the intended mood or effect was. And just, like I said, just give us some of the, some of the behind the scenes um, info on some of these beautiful, beautiful images. So give me just one second here. Ciao. Well, that's me. Um, so uh, lots of things went into this um, background. <laughs> I got a, a text from Utica that she was going to be in Denver. Um, I was living in Denver at the time and I was like, fantastic. Like, I would love to, to shoot. Like, what do you have? I, I always try to start from the garment and like, what, what have you made? What are you looking for? And I remember so vividly, uh, Utica sent me this this video of her with this gigantic headpiece in the hallway of a hotel and I was like oh crap um, I would say a different word if we weren't recording this meeting um, like that's a lot that's a lot to figure out um, we shot it at my condo and I was like it's going to be fine I had like 20 foot ceilings at that point and I had a huge background and we get there and we shot it and I was like ah oh, it is still bigger than the background <laughs> So we we ended up, um, you know, obviously doing some some uh, touch touching it by by an angel, touched by an angel. Uh, this photo has been edited. I'm not sure if anyone knew, but um, just kind of filled everything in. I really really wanted to have this kind of S curve in the pose because there was such a large. Um, the headpiece I really wanted to show off, but, but not only that, but also the detail in the glove and then the detail of the skirt shape, as well as the makeup. Um, I tend to focus a lot on, on makeup in particular in my work. Um, having been a makeup artist, like I think that there's so much work that goes into it that I think that sometimes it can get lost in everything else. So that was my goal with this was show off the face. Um, kind of knock down any sort of color that was outside of that brooch and then around the face. We kind of desaturated some of that around. And then I just wanted, you know, a big broad light that would show off all of the, the beautiful work that Utica had done with her makeup, as well as the pattern and in, in different shapes of the garment. So um, anything else you'd like me to say about it, Brian, or does that kind of cover the, the bases? No, no, that's great. And like I said, I'm very, I'm very pleased that you mentioned, you know, that, you know, for you, especially featuring the makeup is a priority, because that's another thing with this exhibition. Um, Zoe, my, my co-curator and I, we discuss like, you know, how do we approach that, you know, from an artistic standpoint and from a learning standpoint, um, and do it justice, because obviously that that's a huge part of the transformation. And in many ways, <laughs> could be an exhibition in and of itself. And so, um, I mean, we, we tossed some ideas around and ultimately we just figured we, we can't, you know, we, we don't have the space, we don't have the means through which to like, you know, really, you know, go into depth and have like sort of a third element to the exhibition where it's, you know, the garments, the photography and the makeup. Um, but one of the workarounds that we did for this is, you know, there are 20 garments in the show the vast majority of them have two photos. And one photo is, you know, a fuller body shot with, you know, a really dramatic, wonderful pose. And the second photo is a close up on the face. Um, because yes, he, um, Ethan is incredibly talented um, with, with his makeup. And again, it does, it does so much to, you know, create the character 
Um, and so again, so your guys' images were a tremendous tool for, for helping share that with the audience. Um, all right, let's see if... Daniel. Hey, dope work, by the way, Ben. I like that photo. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and please, I encourage you, like, um, as, as Dan is talking and the rest of the photographers are talking, if any of the other photographers have comments or questions for their peers, please, I, I welcome you, ask, ask them. So, but uh, Dan, Daniel, take it away. Has, has the image popped up yet? I still see Ben's image. Oh, I, um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. This is, I'm old. I'm, th th these Zoom calls aren't, aren't my jam. It's, uh, I see the same thing, Daniel. Okay, cool. Hold on one second. Usually it's me doing something wrong, but glad to get the affirmation. Okay, it's saying that my screen sharing is paused. Oh, okay, let's see. Try now. Okay, we'll try that again. We'll get there, guys, we'll get there. Not that one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, okay. There we go, okay. Um, so I'm a big Disney fan. I got the Mickey Mouse bracelet. Um, and so uh, Beauty and the Beast is actually my favorite Disney story just because of the growth um, in one being that the beast exhibits from being bitter at the beginning to not at the end and finding love. Um, so I wanted to bring some of that into the storytelling with Ethan um, and Utica and I talked quite a bit about it, conceptual, conceptualized, um, showed me her dress, uh, which was amazing. Uh, I loved all the details in it, the maroon, yellow. Um, and then that candle I brought in is a, is, a, is a prop and I just painted the dripping wax in. The prop doesn't, it's just plastic, doesn't have dripping wax, doesn't have flames. Um, so we shot the set at a church. Uh, Trevor might know what church it is in Minneapolis. It was the same one that I helped Trevor out on a set. And it had kind of these whimsical castle type of vibes. Um, and then Trevor brought, or I brought my, I think I brought my flash and Trevor just helped out. Um, but yeah, uh, played around a lot with the mood. Uh, like I said, did a little painting. I'm big on adding depth with fog. Um, I do, I paint quite a bit of haze and fog in and, and just use the um, lighting, the in, uh, enhancing the lighting in Photoshop to, to bring about an extra dimension um, of the Disney vibes and in, showing Utica's character um, is kind of like, not a loner, I want to say, but like in, in their thoughts, like a beast that's in their thoughts, trying to make their way through uh, the process of finding love and, and, and being lost in that process. So we, we, we try to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Does that no. nail all the marks, Brian? You did, you did. Um, okay. Now of the photos that we're going to look at tonight, if, if I were to guess, I would say this one probably has the most post-production work. No, actually the one of her facing the camera, holding the candle in the stair. So this okay. one's not, not composite at all. I composited a little bit of flying leaves and some fog and then the, the, the candle shine and stuff. Okay. Um, but the one of her facing the camera um, was, was full on composite. I composited the whole entire background. Okay. And do you recall like roughly what time of day was the shot? Oh, it was before it went dark. Uh, I want to say five evening time in Minneapolis. Uh, you know, not winter evening time, but more of a fall evening time. I think we shot it. It was a few months before the episode aired. Okay. Ethan knows I suck at getting deadlines out and, and uh, <laughs> my edits take forever. So I remember Ethan like, hammering me on okay episodes out or episodes coming out you need to have it done okay cool um and i know i i i had this question later um and I, i'll i'll pose it to you um 
again, there's there's a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, Ben, what did you call it? The retouching? Oh, Touched by an Angel. The little Touched by an <laughs> Angel. Um, in terms of everything. Uh, Daniel, if you were to guess roughly probably how many hours um, of retouching is in this? I want to say maybe 15 or 20 in this photo. Some of them, the one I was talking about earlier exceeded 30 just because it was a full on composite. Some of the ones I do, um, not these in Ethan, take 60 or more, just depends on how much I paint. Like um, mm -hmm. painting takes, I'm not the most uh, efficient editor. I kind of do what works for me. I have a vision going into it. I know how I want to nail it, but I don't do it the fastest. So uh, it's a lot of trial and error and stuff to get to the result that I want. Well, it's a beautiful result. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, this Eric. Hello. Um, okay, so this photo uh, was shot, I believe the season was still, yes, the season was still going. Um, it was approaching the end uh, of the season and Utica had kind of created a whole bunch of other garments uh, as she does um, very quickly and very beautifully. <laughs> um, I know that she was working on this one actually on the plane to the shoot. Um, and it was, a, this was probably one of the biggest shoots we had done. Um, we had done a few things here and there um, up in, I have a smaller studio, which I'm in right now. And then there's a bigger part of my studio um, where I get to use a psych wall uh, once a month. And this was one of my, probably like, probably my second or third time using that wall. Um, and I actually got to borrow um, some lights from one of the other photographers here. Um, I think they cost like over $30,000 or something insane. Uh, it was umbrella, like one of those huge umbrellas, like 20 feet across. Um, and it was a very new experience for me. Um, my lighting is often very dramatic and kind of pinpointy. Um, so it was really exciting to kind of like see just how well I could light something. Um, and, you know, here in the background is a, a wall that um, one of the other photographers had painted. Uh, we had a few people on set and it was just like a really, really exciting uh, time to like, you know, I've never, I've never been able to light something like this. And it was really, um, I think a turning point um, in my photography when I realized that um, that's kind of, you can really, really get in there if you want to, you know, if you have $30,000 as well, but <laughs> I'm just all about making it work with uh, the uh, $300 light I have, but um, it was a really, really great learning process. Now, um, I don't want the other photographers to be jealous. Um, Eric gets two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he gets two because um, this, so this photo, um, for those who haven't seen the exhibition, this is on the title wall. When, when people first walk into the gallery, this is what they see. Um, because this photo worked very well for the space. Um, but Eric is also responsible for this gorgeous shot <laughs> that unfortunately, like I said, just, just didn't work um, for the title wall and this Marie Antoinette dress is in our atrium. And so photo choices were difficult, um, but this is just such a stunning, stunning photo. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how, how this came to be? Yeah, um, so this is in that same space, um, just without the background, we had moved it off to the side um, and we, had two people on either side uh, and there was just this really beautiful fabric that had like a real flowiness to it. Um, originally we had kind of tied it up to a couple C stands before we were like, this isn't really doing the movement uh, justice. So I had two people on either side, uh, just give them the give uh, each on either side, two of those a toss. And uh, we had it, um, the, computer plugged into my camera and we all like collectively gasped at like this one image. Um, there's barely any retouching in here. This was just exactly where everything landed. Um, you know, I've got a whole bunch where it's almost there, but this was like immediately the one, uh, just pure luck in terms of that movement. Um, but yeah, it was a really, really cool day. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Liam. Wow. Um, cool. Yay, I'm happy it's this 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 image. I I I'm so proud of this image. This is this is one of my better ones. Um yeah, the story behind this, um I I was really photo not, I was really excited to photograph this because it was like the the B sides of the uh of content for the show because this never this this garment never got to have a life on the show because it was um you know they had they the split premiere and the split first couple episodes of the season this was what would have been um Utica's LeMay runway and so I was so excited to photograph this garment and um I felt excited at the opportunity to give this a life of its own and um, because it was never on the show. And I think story behind this shoot um, was like, I remember having conversations about this garment um, and the whole, the whole idea was always that it, it lived it lived in a like autumnal wonderland. Like okay. it was, it always, I, I think that was just such a clear part of, um, you know, Ethan's vision for how the garment should be showcased is that there was always this sense of like place and we're having this conversation in October. So I was like, okay, we can, we can make this happen. Autumn is upon us. So um, it was kind of just a matter of um, location scouting and finding this wooded autumnal area. And we were actually at this location like a week before and we'd found it. We're like, this is great. This place will work. But the leaves had not like quite changed. Like everything was still not vibrant green, dying, but not like not those autumn colors either. And so I think we location scouted this like a week before and then the next weekend we were kind of watching fall colors and the weather was right and um everything kind of just came together for this this was like in this beautiful kind of like oak oak tree grove in this um park in northeast minneapolis um and um i'm i'm just like happy this garment got to kind of like live in the place that uh it was supposed to at like the onset of this and um and also Utica had such a like specific vision for how she wanted to like perform this um or present this on the runway because it kind of has this um you know her hands are her hands are in these like bat wing circles almost and had this whole presentation of it being like enclosed and then opening up. So we just like played a lot that day. Um, and this image actually was like, I think we were done. I think we had like taken all the photos we needed to. Um, and at the end, like I, th th this was taken on my medium format film camera and like shooting on film is something I love to do in my personal work and I love to like include it as much as I can and so usually for all our shoots I would shoot we would do the shoot on digital and I always bring my film camera and this was one we got at the end I was just like I just want to go back and revisit that one spot and get a film version and um it was I'm I'm, I'm so happy and proud with how this one turned out and um I love that collaboration with Ethan and, and like, I was thinking, you know, I shot this on film. I'm like, Ethan is totally someone that, you know, has a vision and an idea and a direction, but also like, will say yes to like any ideas and is also like just as down to be creative and like play. And it, that's just, that's what it should be. It should be fun and playful. 
Now, the the film camera that you used, yes. roughly how old was it? Um, girl, she old. It's right here. Um, I don't know when, but like, it's this big, it's like as big as my head. It's a huge honking medium format film camera. I think, I think that's like from the eighties. It's not okay. something that is made currently. But no, be, I, I ask because, so, so again, for those who haven't seen the exhibition, this, this photo was printed at, you know, four feet by three feet, roughly. And we had them professionally printed, of course. And when the photo was being installed, the printer said, he's like, the photographer did something different here. <laughs> um, he knew when it was uh, being printed, and of course, he's looking at it, you know, not literally pixel by pixel, but um, to have it printed at that scale. And when he was reviewing the files, he, he knew. And I remember he, he wanted to ask you. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, about it, the I, camera because he's like, there's something different going on here. <laughs> it renders quite differently. Um, oh, very good. 1970. Yeah, um, lots of like film cameras that are still uh, bouncing around the world that still work. That's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I had I had never experienced my work um, as at that scale before, so you know, I like had spent so much time with this photo, but I felt like seeing it in the gallery was like some, I, I had never seen my own work that way. And that was, I'm really like grateful for that experience. Thank you. All right. And the last one. Trevor, I, 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 I think you'll be like 75 years old still talking about this photo <laughs> and, being, and, and being interviewed about it and asked questions about it because this is certainly one that'll go down in, in history. So um, please tell us the, the story behind this. Okay, so uh, believe it or not, this was kind of a hot mess shoot. Um, we were running out of light we didn't know where we were gonna go. Utica had just finished her makeup and it took a little longer than, than we anticipated. Um, we ended up just going to a little park close to where she lived at the time. And there were power lines everywhere. There were people walking around. It wasn't an ideal situation. So I ended up shooting most of the photos pretty low to try to just get sky in the background. I wasn't sure exactly how um, we were gonna do it. And then in the end, um, once we got all the photos, I think we just made the executive decision. That, uh, I was just, I ended up basically replacing background and foreground every, so most of this is um, a digital, not a render, but it's a photo composite um, using several stock photos and a little bit of like Photoshop painting and stuff. So the trees in the background, even the like grass in the foreground and everything was um, composited. And then the the smoke and fog was was painted in to kind of blend it all together. And then obviously Utica herself is is the photograph. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a process getting there for sure. And we were on a time crunch as well with the episode coming out. So this was a look that we knew people were going to be, um, we knew it was going to be like a big moment on the, on, in the season. So we definitely wanted to make it like an impactful thing. So um, in some ways it ended up being, a, I think, a better thing that we um, went the digital route because it honestly, helped me kind of emulate the style of the pose and the garments and kind of put a spin on it that I think helped increase and boost kind of the wonderment and the whole like very like whimsical mysterious vibe that I think this garment gives off. Like, I think it's confusing and fun all at the same time. 
And so I guess maybe the, the same question that I asked Daniel, if you were to guess roughly how many hours you spent at a computer after the fact, um, how much time is invested in this? Um, some of these took longer than others. I, I think this one probably took the long, no. So I probably the initial one that took the longest was the, the far out version from behind because that's when I did the original compositing. For this one, I used a lot of the same elements from the other one, so it didn't take me as long to kind of put together. But for me, I would probably say for the initial one, probably around like five or six hours. And then for some of these other ones, maybe more in the, like this one probably three hours. Okay, cool. All right. Done with the sharing there. So awesome. Thank you so much. It's very, very cool to hear how, how the magic happens behind the scenes. Um, all right. In the interest of time, just uh, just a couple more questions. And I imagine um Kelpie, you may might have some very controversial answers to this. What makes a good photo of a drag queen? And what makes a bad photo of a drag queen? Ben, I want to hear your answers first. <laughs> <laughs> Biting at the bit, I'm chomping. Um, I would say for me, it's lighting because I think lighting can take like as someone who has been behind the, the goop and, and all of it, um, lighting can go from beautiful and exactly what you want. And in, in the minute that, you know, a running joke of a drag queen in overhead lighting is not the jam. So there's a lot of like texture and, um, you know, uh, uh, misdirection <laughs> drag has. And so I think that, that um, all of the photographers in this room understand and I'm sure have experienced. Um, I think lighting is the most important thing. Um, and number two, I would say is posing. None of the, the Beyonce broken chicken arms um, is what I hope for everyone. <laughs> so those would be my two things personally. Okay. Anyone else have some insights on this topic? I think it's also about, and I, this is the first, sorry, Eric, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, this is the first Drake queen that I've shot. Um, but I think with anybody else, it's bringing out their persona and Utica, obviously a larger than life persona. Um, but when I work with anybody, I try to take their personality and what they bring to the table to this world and, and um, use that in the, in the feelings and the emotions that go into that photo. Ben's obviously right, lighting makes, makes a photo. Um, Delvin Deeper, uh, I just try to tell the story of that person's persona and use their um, uniqueness to uh, convey that photo. I would definitely agree. Lighting is the biggest downfall of many a drag queen and also the biggest help. Um, the wrong, like the wrong angle, the wrong type of lighting, it can just really, really reveal a lot of things you're trying to hide. Um, and I think a lot of drag is about the illusion and the way you're changing stuff. So it's really, you know, I, I don't love to do too much editing um, I like getting things like as perfect as I can in the moment, which is something I learned <laughs> the hard way a lot of times. And, um, you know, if you can get it in that right spot and keep that illusion working, that's the most important part. You're not going to see a lot of side profiles of drag queens because they just spent all this time manipulating that. So I think making sure you're capturing the makeup in the way it's intended is really important as well. Okay, and then last question for me, moving off the subject of drag queens, because not many of us will have the opportunity to go out tomorrow and start taking pictures of 
fabulous queens. Um, but um, if you could give our audience tonight and um, anyone who's gonna watch the recorded version of this in the future, um, just a couple of tips to help us improve our own photography, whether that's us pointing an iPhone at a flower that we see on the sidewalk <laughs> or us snapping a picture of the family lined up against the fireplace at Christmas. Um, any, any general pieces of advice for anyone looking to improve their photography? I'll jump in on this. Um, for me, I think a lot of it is just practice. There are tons of resources online for if you have specific areas you're interested in, but honestly, just getting out and shooting, connecting with other creators, looking at work you like and then trying to figure out what you like about it and then honestly even trying to recreate it sometimes just to kind of learn the basics um, really helps kind of build a good foundation um, but yeah so much of it is just getting out and doing it don't get too bogged down with like the technicals or what like everything you see online just just get out and shoot find other people who like to shoot if you're better in groups but um that's honestly, I think, the best way to learn. I was going to come from a similar take to uh, you can get bogged down with a lot of the technicals. And obviously, you need to know some stuff. Um, the cameras, you, you got to know how your equipment works. Um, but we can get too bogged down. And what really helped me is, is, is when I started shooting from my heart, look, we all have different experiences that mold us into who we are right now, um, the person that we are. And if we shoot from those experiences and we tell that story from those experiences visually, um, I just think it just makes us a better photographer rather than looking at rules. Um, if you look online, there's all these rules of photography and some of them are there, but um, they're also made to be broken um, based on our own, our own experiences and storytelling. So um, that's probably the piece of advice I'd give. Yeah, I would say the best way to like improve your skills um, as a photographer is to just start taking pictures, like just start and like follow, um, I don't like follow your passion. Like if your passion is food photography, if your passion is fashion, if it's travel, if it's shooting on film versus digital, like I think, um, in whatever your photography journey is like the sooner you're investing in what you're interested in that's just you're just just setting yourself up for um like a very a, a rich uh and fun relationship with photography and um like i i have to do that like it's my full-time job now and i when it becomes your job there like there's a magic that leaves it too so i am constantly trying to carve out and find new ways to like fall back in love with photography and it I, i've found it to be um something you can do that in if you just kind of follow your what follow what's interesting to you and i'm yeah i think it's it's worth it to like develop that eye and style but you just got to start taking pictures one one parting thing you don't have to buy expensive gear to be a good photographer and that's one of my biggest things that i will say to anyone it's like buying an expensive violin doesn't make you a violinist so i've seen beautiful things being taken with an iphone so like don't worry about not having a certain type of camera or a certain type of light, like follow what you love and you can take a good picture with just about anything. So parting words. Definitely start with the basics and then work your way up because that's how you learn is when you struggle so hard with the stupidest little on-camera flash and you're like, I know what I'm doing and you really don't. But then the more you perfect it, then you're like, oh, and it helps you move on to the next thing. Like you're forever, once you really get into it, you're forever and ever and ever going to be buying new equipment and leveling up stuff. But you learn, the best way to learn is to start with the absolute bare minimum because you force yourself to like really MacGyver some situations. And then you find out there was an answer for it all along. So...
very that. Love it. Thank you. Um, let's see. Well, so I want to be very respectful of everyone's time. We're a little bit after. Um, do we want to? I think we're, we're a small enough group. Does anyone have a question for any or all of our photographers? And audience members, um, feel free to go ahead and throw those questions in the chat box. If you don't feel comfortable being on camera or asking verbally, that's okay too. Um, but if anyone has any last parting thoughts or questions. Okay, I, I think we're, I think we're good. Um, so just um, thank you, all five of you for being so generous with your time and um, for contributing so much to this exhibition. It would be a very, very different show without your work in it. So thank you very much for trusting us at the Rochester Art Center to share it with the world. Thanks for having us, guys. Uh, seriously, okay. it's great to meet everyone. Thank you yeah. for having us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being with us tonight. Have a wonderful evening. You guys, too. Bye. 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 April 4th, we'll um, have a big closing weekend. And so there's still plenty of time to come here in person, as well as check out our website, rochesterartscenter.org. If you wanna view some of these fabulous images, um, more images online and take a little tour around the gallery online as well, that we do have that available as well. So thank you, Brian, and thank you all photographers. Thank you, Pam, everyone for joining us tonight. So. Have a wonderful evening. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone.